proceed through that. Yes, let's get the blacks. Proceed. 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 Next image. Next image. Next image. We have now gone to through the sequence to 13, 26, 12, 842. Next image. Next image. Next image. Next image. Now there is a no recording for 1.601, is that correct? Yes, sir. And the next recorded image is 13, 26, 14, 577. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Next image. 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 And we've gone through the sequence up to 13, 26, 15, 7, 12. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Next image. Next image. Next image. Next image. <coughs> Next image. 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 Now. 
This shows now that there is a stoppage of recording or no recording for how long? 20.587 seconds. Go ahead, Mr. Lacey, go through it. You may want to note uh, this particular uh, image number. It's an important image out of camera 12. And that is 13, 26, 38, dot 034. Now, is that the first image, Mr. Koenig, from that 20-second lapse where camera 12 was not recording? That's correct. Next image. Next image. Now that first frame that, uh, that we saw, that was after the muzzle flash that we saw in camera 11. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So the first frame that we saw on camera 12 that was recorded, 20 seconds after that lapse of non-recording time, the first frame that you see in these bitmaps from camera 12 was after the muzzle flash. Your Honor, I'm going to object to Captain testifying. I, it, this is crucial stuff. And Mr. Escobar, you know, just asking in a leading fashion what he believes the video shows is inappropriate. We're all going to watch it. We're all going to figure it out for ourselves. And Mr. Escobar and I can do this in closing argument, but not now. I'll rephrase it. Thanks. Mr. Koenig, uh, that first frame that uh, we see on camera 12 after that 20 second non recording period, how does that coincide with the camera 11? frame that we saw a muzzle flash. It's after that. Keep going, Mr. Lacey. Right. Go through. Sorry. <laughs> Next frame. Next frame. <sighs> Next frame. 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 Mr. Lacey, could you now, get, now go to the next portion of that video that is non-recorded? Can you enlarge that? Next frame. So there, again now, there is, Mr. Koenig, how much of a time frame for non-reported video from camera 12? 7.140 seconds. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Lacey. If we can remove that. Now, let's talk a little bit about bit frames and, uh, and your time uh, with the FBI, uh, even before you got into the uh, forensic section of the FBI. You were an FBI agent, correct? I was uh, what they call a street agent in, in, in the armed agency. And uh, you had uh, some experience, obviously, in investigating crimes that, you know, sometimes had evidence there at the at the scene. Is that correct? Yeah, I was involved in bank robberies and other type of investigations where crime scene work has to be done. And uh, is it uh, was it your responsibility to secure evidence properly? I think that was for all agents, not just me in particular at all. Uh, did you ever delegate the securing of evidence to employees, for example, of the bank? Excuse me, Judge. I'm going to object to this line of questioning. It's outside, outside the scope of the realm of the expertise in which he was designated. He was designated as a specific expert. And throughout the entire discovery process, there's been no information, no inclination that we were going to go into what he did almost 40 years ago as an FBI agent, as a street agent. Everything that I've done up until this point, and I have been told, is that he is a video expert and that's the limit of his testimony. So right now, if you're going to allow that, then we need a Richardson here. Because that's where we're, we're at at this point. Uh, and so I'm going to object to the testimony. Yeah, he's not testifying as a, an expert. You don't need to testify as an expert to talk about his time in law enforcement and securing evidence. That's not expert testimony. That's actually a layperson, officer opinion as to what he did in order to secure evidence properly, even 40 years ago. In fact, I'm glad it was 40 years ago because those particular rules existed 40 years ago, and those same rules exist today. There's absolutely nothing in his CV <clears throat> to indicate the experience that we now want to go through. This, this is, and that's the problem, is you know, you let down the primrose path and now I sit here in the middle of the courtroom and I'm hearing testimony that I had no idea would come out of this gentleman's mouth. Not from his CV, not from the deposition, not from anything. What's can, this? I, can I approach the court and give the court uh, defense exhibit number 28 that they have had from the very beginning of Mr. Koenig, which is clearly says that between uh, the years of 1970 and 1974, uh, he was a special agent with the FBI, investigative responsibility in Atlanta and the Detroit divisions involving bank robberies, prison escapes, terrorism, and other violations of the federal law. I approach. So for him to come in here and now say that he had no notice of it is not being genuine to this court. I'm absolutely being genuine to the court. Was I this a uh, subject of any deposition questions? Judge, uh, you know, I, I can't remember, you know, back when he took his deposition, but certainly he had the CV. So if he chooses not to ask a question about someone's past, then he chooses not to ask a question about someone's past. I shouldn't have to spoon feed him and say, Mr. Martin, this is what I anticipate asking of this particular witness. That is not expert testimony. All right, then let's get to the other prong. Um, for what purposes are you eliciting this testimony? Because what happened in this particular case, Your Honor, and you're going to be able to see it through their own witnesses as well, is that uh, Detective Aaron Smith, who was in charge of the crime scene, allowed the Cobb Theater, instead of him having he had his, he had his entire cyber crimes unit there at the scene of the Cobb Theater. And so what does he do? Instead of getting those cyber sign uh, detectives who testified and we deposed, who said we were there to help and do that. We could have downloaded the, the hard drive. We could have imaged those hard drives. We could have done everything right then and there. Detective Aaron Smith decides that no, he is going to give it to some unknown body up in Alabama 
that is the Cobb Theater. And I think it's very relevant for this very experienced former FBI agent to be able to testify that that is a protocol that back 40 years ago was a huge no-no. You do not allow an independent private person to control the evidence. Just like if it was a kilo of cocaine, you don't give it to your neighbor and say, by the way, an officer, by the way, why don't you hold this for me until I come back next week to pick it up. It's no different from a kilo of cocaine as it is for a video and for a hard drive. And that's exactly what the government did in this case. That may, may or may not be true until you hear all the testimony. The bottom line is what Mr. Escobar just told you, he's offering him as an expert in how an investigation should take place and saying, believe me, because 40 years ago, I walked the streets as an FBI agent and that's expert testimony. However you want to couch it, because he's pitting that against the police officers in this particular case. And so therefore, it's beyond the expertise in which he was in fact qualified and I object to it. Judge, I can tell you as an officer of the court, not only is he gonna say that, but their own officers, their own detectives that were there at the scene, they're gonna say it as well. All right, then let's keep it clean and let them say it. He's been I will move he's on. been proffered as an expert in the video and the areas that he's in. Let's keep it at that. I will, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Koenig, I'm going to show you what's been marked as defense exhibit number 35 and ask you to please take a look at exhibit number 35 and tell me what that is. Um, 35 is a video DVD. Order speed, cam 11. Uh, these are enhanced, resized, two times magnification. And again, is that a fair and accurate duplication of the information that you received from Q6, which is the Cobb uh, Theater surveillance video in this case? Yes, sir. Your Honor, we would introduce at this point in time defense exhibit number 35, which will be, or accepts it, court introduced exhibit number 16. All right. And if I could just say, because I have two. I will. I can't make out of it. No, no, otherwise be admitted. Lacey, and in order to save a little bit of time to the court, I'd like you to go to the following notations, and I'm just going to put them for the record. Um, it's the start of the chapter 31 colon 18 to 3250, then 34 colon 54 to 35 colon 35, and then 46 colon 25 to the end, which will be 50 colon. Zero eight. Yes, I'm sorry.
Mr. Cody, and now there was an approximately 11, 12 second, no recording at this point in time. Is yeah, that correct? Little, over 12 seconds, yes. <coughs> Mr. Cody, we sped that uh, film up to where Mr. Reeves is coming back into, this, into the theater after going to the front desk. That's correct. From the timeline, you saw that. Um, but it's still not film. It's a digital video. <laughs> Sorry. So there's no recording now for three plus seconds, correct? And of course, it's going to be four times longer because we're playing it at one fourth speed. And now there's seven plus seconds again with no recording. Correct. Approach your You may. 
I am going to show you what's been marked as defense exhibit number 32, 33, and 34. I ask you to take a look at those exhibits and see if those are variations of the imaging uh, that you did and uh, enlargements and uh, enhancements of the Q6 videos of the Cobb Theater. Yes, the, they're all video DVDs of CAM 11. Uh, 32 is unenhanced at the original image size, 320 by 240. 33 is enhanced, but still at 320 by 240. And 34 is direct, unenhanced in other words, and magnified twice or enlargement of four of the images. Okay. And th do those fairly and accurately depict what you were able to enhance and enlarge from the Q6? Also, I didn't mention it's quarter, one quarter speed. All of it. Now, we would introduce as uh, defense exhibit number 32. I'll show all these to you going. 33. show you what's been marked as defense exhibit number 25 and defense exhibit number 30 and ask you what those are 35 first 25 is uh, 25 video DVD cam 12 Exhibit 11 uh, that was for Cam 11. So this is kind of the same setup that was for that. Just different camera. Different camera. Yes. Okay. And again, uh, with exhibit number 25, does that fairly and accurately uh, depict the contents of uh, Q6 uh, as you enlarged it and enhanced it? Did you want to give me exhibit 26? Is the second one? This is 30. Yeah, no, uh, 30, 25, and then 30. We're not doing 20. Okay. Right now. We're, that, that comes next. 30 is a data DVD. It's bitmaps of areas featured in the loops that were on the Quartz Exhibit 13. Okay. Again, this one from camera 11. Yes. 
and uh, do they fairly and accurately depict as well uh, the contents of Q6 as you enlarge and enhance them? Yes. Yeah, we would uh, introduce Exhibit 25 and Exhibit 30 into evidence. 25 being? 20. been marked as exhibit number 26. What is exhibit number 26? These are bitmap images for the designated CAM 11, CAM 12 files of Q6. They were copied to a one terabyte hard drive. Now that, those bitmaps there, uh, do they, uh, do they have the black files in between them or not? There are no recording files, I should say. I don't believe they do. Okay. And do this uh, this fairly inaccurately again uh, depict uh, the contents of Q6 that you had uh, <coughs> enlarged and enhanced and reproduced for this particular hard drive? That's correct. Got to rewind. Introduce. Exhibit number 26. 22. Now, let's talk about what you did, if anything, in an effort to try to determine the source of that white item that we saw uh, in the uh, videos that we've shown the court today. And a two by three pixel rectangular. Whatever. <laughs> um, we wanted to run test recordings at the theater using obviously the same cameras, equipment and everything it was done originally. And your office advised us that you had contacted the theater and that was not really a problem, except that we had to do it in the middle of the night. Uh, so we all went out there on, I think I have a July 28, 2015. And did we, uh, did you have, or did we have uh, with us uh, the uh, left shoe that Mr. Reeves was wearing uh, on the date of this incident, as well as a replica of the phone and the black phone case of the iPhone that was uh, Mr. Olson's phone. Yes, sir. And what were we going to do with those two items? What was the plan there at the Cobb Theater to do with, uh, with those two items? Well, we pulled off images, you know, print so we could see everything, uh, know where they were in the theater, and then take you know, the items we have, and turn them in every way we could think of and, and all the areas we kind of see them on the screen uh, to determine if they could be one of those two items. So it would, we figured it would take some hours to be able to do that because there are obviously lots of ways you can turn things. Uh, and then we'd have to pull the information off the video system. So like I said, we got there very late at night and expected probably be there till morning. What time, uh, we talk about late at night, talk about real late at night? Uh, yes. So we ultimately, I don't think any of us got any sleep that night. We were up. Even as it was, we were up all night. Okay. And is that a scientific method of being able to form some opinions concerning those particular items? Meaning, you know, whether that uh, two by three pixel that appeared uh, on the video was either a shoe or a cell phone. Yes, I mean, you, you might not always be able to say it is, but you can say it's consistent or it's not consistent. Um, yes, we realize we'd have to take 
lots of video and see what we come up with back in obviously back in our lab after we did all that. Okay, and, and what happened when we got there to the pop theater and you arrived uh, with, uh, did you arrive with anyone other than the defense team? Uh, was Mr. Lacey there as well? He sure was. Okay, and, and was that your team to try to accomplish this goal? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And tell me what you did there at the Cobb Theater to try to see if we could have you know, some controls over this scientific process that you were trying to employ. Well, we certainly had to have access to that particular theater. I think it was, at least in the video, it was, <coughs> it was Theater 10, so I don't know what they actually called it, but that's what it was in the video, um, and be able to set it up and do that. So I think the first thing we, we, I mean, we obviously looked at the theater and they had given that space to us. So we went up to the I guess, control room, it was a, not a very big room this all was in, and looked at it. And that's when we ran into a problem because we looked at the screen and getting the exact image was really important. So we knew where the seats ended, as you saw in the pictures. We, that was real important to us. We want to make sure that was exactly the same. Why is that important? Explain to the court why that's important in trying to make these determinations. Well, you have to have the same camera position. You know, it's, it ended up being much wider than that. So we at that point didn't know, okay, was it misset in the system? Had the camera been replaced? Had the system been replaced? Um, and I don't even think that night we actually ever, at that point, knew which one exactly, but ultimately the system had been to a large extent replaced. And they couldn't tell us, is it the same cameras? Are they Zoom cameras? Nobody knew. But in the end, it was obvious the system had been changed to the point that trying to run any, uh, you know, any, any exemplars would be just a waste of time. Sure. Thank you very much. Let's take 10 minutes. And I'll be working with you. Okay. 